The recruitment landscape is constantly evolving as its actors respond rapidly to changing labour market needs. Understanding the roles and features of the main actors involved in the recruitment landscape, such as public employment services and private employment agencies, and exploring their opportunities for partnership is key to recognising how these actors can contribute to promoting fair recruitment processes. My name is Heike Lautenschlager and welcome to the ILO Masterclass on Fair Recruitment. Public employment services play a critical role in the efficient organisation of the labour market towards the goal of full, productive and freely chosen employment. They are provided both by governments through their ministries of labour and by private employment agencies. Public employment services plan and execute labour market policies and their major responsibilities can be described as follows. First, they provide accurate information about the labour market. Second, they can assist with job search and providing placement services. Third, they administer unemployment insurance benefits and a variety of labour market programmes. And finally, they monitor the activities of private recruitment agencies and enforce their regulations. On the other hand, private employment agencies also play an important role in the labour market. They provide an alternative service of job matching and they also offer training and upskilling opportunities to meet the employer's needs. In particular, the PEAs provide services for employment matching, services consisting of employing workers with a view to making them available to a third party, and other services relating to job seeking, such as the provision of information. Temporary employment agencies are also a growing trend, especially in EU member states, for instance. The role of private employment agencies has been growing. This is due to a number of factors. We've seen a rapidly changing and flexible labour market. There are constraints in the operations of public employment services and the use of other networks for placement. The first role of governments is to determine whether or not private employment agencies are actually allowed to operate as businesses and if so, what conditions they must fulfil. Back in 1997, the ILO constituents adopted the Private Employment Agencies Convention, number 181. The convention does two things. It recognises the role that private employment agencies can play in the functioning of the labour market, and it sets the general parameters for the regulation, placement and employment of workers. The convention also, secondly, promotes partnership between private employment agencies and public employment services. In particular, Recommendation 188 specifies the provisions for this cooperation. The figure on the screen that you will see now portrays the triangular relationships um, that can be intermediated through PEAs and most often through the temporary work agencies. Um, which are governed by the national regulatory context um, in which they occur. The PEA and the employee are linked by an employment contract, while the enterprise and the PEA sign a commercial contract. At the same time, the enterprise supervises the work of the employee. There is considered to be no employment relationship between the temporary agency worker and the enterprise, the user company although there could be legal obligations of the user company toward the temporary agency worker, especially when it comes to health and safety. Labour recruiters and employment agencies operate a continuum of formality and informality, compliance and non-compliance with regards to national and international labour standards. On the one extreme end of the spectrum, they may operate in accordance with international labour standards and demonstrate a commitment to decent work and fair recruitment practices. On the other hand, unscrupulous recruiters may be responsible for some of the most serious violations of workers' basic rights, including being responsible for human trafficking and forced labour. And then in between, there is a broad spectrum of abusive and fraudulent practices 
including deception about the nature and conditions of work, mobility restrictions, underpayment of wages, and also charging of recruitment fees and related costs, just to name a few. Aware of their negative image in certain quarters, the leading private agencies have developed mechanisms of self-regulation to promote good business practice and receive recognition as legitimate players alongside public employment services. Governments enforce national legislation as a means of balancing the interest of private agencies with the need to protect the rights of workers. The starting point for all regulation is to determine the legal status and the conditions uh, for operating private agencies. In particular, there are three basic models of statutory regulation. First is prohibition, where private recruitment agencies are completely banned from the labour market. Second is licensing, where agencies must request a license that is granted when certain conditions are met. And third, we have registration, which is where the agencies are registered in the same way as any other commercial business and are subject to certain controls. Private employment agencies have organized themselves to gain visibility and legitimacy in national and global labor markets. Therefore, it's important to highlight the positive role played by self-regulation initiative, such as professional codes of conduct and other voluntary industry standards. A prime example is the code of conduct developed by the World Employment Confederation. To this day, it plays a leading role in establishing worldwide standards for its agency members in the recruitment industry. Public and private employment agencies are motivated to cooperate by common points of interest. The ILO Private Employment Agencies Convention number 181 and its accompanying recommendation 188 provide guidance on how cooperation between public and private employment services could be carried out. We can highlight several benefits of partnership for both the actors in the public and the private sector. For public employment services, cooperation means optimizing the use of public funds through cost savings, higher efficiency in the delivery of labor market services. It also means gaining greater overall understanding of labor market developments. On the other hand, for private employment agencies, cooperation means recognition of their role as legitimate and successful providers of labour market services. And it also gives them better access to labour market information and other data at the disposal of the public services, as well as being a further possible source of revenue and profit. Conclusion, the main actors involved in employment and recruitment services are public employment services and private employment agencies. Thanks to their positive contribution and efficiency in terms of employment matching services, recent decades have witnessed the rapid growth of private employment agencies. While some agencies and labour recruiters operate in accordance with international labour standards and promote fair recruitment, Others may be responsible for abusive and fraudulent practices. In this regard, the role of government is to determine whether or not private agencies are allowed to operate, and if so, what conditions they must fill. In addition, it's also important to highlight the relevance of self-regulation initiatives of private agencies. Finally, in line with the ILO Private Employment Agencies Convention, the partnership and cooperation between the public and private employment services is key to the efficient promotion of employment opportunities and fair recruitment processes.